Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Tell Me More podcast presented by Major League Success. Uh, my name is John Harp, and I'm super excited to have uh, our guest on today. And this individual is someone that I've got to uh, know uh, really well over the past year, year and a half, and got to see him grow uh, in real estate. And I'm so happy to have him on board uh, to do this. I know he's a little bit nervous, but uh, Joey, uh, thank you for coming on. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us, you know, you're, you're with um, uh, Ohio Housing Experts, right? Tell us a little bit about your team and, and company and where you're at. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank you for having me on. It's, uh, I'm super happy to be here and excited to, uh, to go over this. So uh, yeah, here with EXP and uh, on the Ohio Housing Experts, uh, team leader Mike Doyle, shout out to him. Um, we'll get, we'll dive into him a little bit, um, you know, here soon and, and get deep. But um, yeah, absolutely love it here in real estate and uh, enjoying being on the team. Awesome. So, Joey, I always like to go back to the very beginning of, of uh, you know, when we were younger and uh, our childhood, because I think our childhood and our our life experience plays a big role in, you know, our, our real estate business and our career and and our lifestyle and life as an adult. So, you know, can you can you dive into kind of like growing up? What was family like? What was life like? Um, you know, were you uh, always, you know, an entrepreneur, you know, because even like in real estate, you know, even if you're on a team or not, you know, you still have to have some of those entrepreneurial entrepreneurial tendencies. Right. So was that ever a thing for you growing up or? Uh, yeah. So growing up, um, I had a great childhood. Um, I can't complain at all. I, um, you know, didn't have a, a ton of adversity to handle. I uh, was very fortunate with the hand that I was dealt. Um, you know, starting with the amazing parents that I have, I owe everything that, that I am today. Owe that to them. So shout out mom and dad, if you're listening, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Um, you got, you got to put their name on it. Yeah. Terry and Michelle Atkins, man. They're the, they're the bees knees. Everybody around <laughs> West Jeff, uh, everybody around West Jeff knows it for sure. My mom is a social butterfly and, uh, that is, that is kind of the same. So that's awesome. Um, you know, as far as the entrepreneurial mindset, um, I don't know if I would say I had that growing up as a kid. I, I definitely was the social butterfly kind of a guy as well, where, you know, I just I love to talk <laughs> sometimes too much. But, um, you know, just being around different people and socializing and, and getting out there. And um, I was a little hard headed at times. So, uh, you know, wanting to own your own business and, and be your own boss, I could definitely see that growing up as well. But. Um, growing up in the, in the small town of West Jeff, um, on the west side of Columbus, uh, again, I owe the, the town who I am today. So I love growing up there. Everybody knows everybody. Um, just a real, real good place to, to grow up for sure. And um, grew up with a lot of the same friends that I still am lucky enough to, to call friends today. Yeah, and I'm sure we'll dive into it, but I'm sure that's, you know, playing an impact into your real estate career and, and kind of what you're doing. So, you know, as you grew up, you know, you, you know, you said things were great, you know, um, were you kind of like into sports, you know, you know, were you a team player, you know, what, what are some of the activities that you did, whether it was, you know, middle school, high school, what, what did yeah. you like? What did you enjoy? What were some of your hobbies? Yeah. So ever since I was a kid, you know, just being outdoors, um, is, is number one priority for me. And I'm not, I mean, don't get me wrong. I was a kid that loved video games and, you know, watching movies and all that stuff like everybody else. But, um, I, you know, I grew up out in the country uh, a little bit. We had a, an acre and a half, but um, had some woods really close to us. So I love fishing and just being outdoors, you know, playing games with, with different kids around the, the neighborhood and stuff and riding bikes and, and that sort of thing. And then growing up, you know, throughout middle school and high school, it was uh, sports. West Jeff is a very, very um, sports oriented town, especially football. Uh, it absolutely dominates. So um they're they're kicking butt right now they still have and they have been for a long time so it's a very rich tradition as far as football goes and um i love being you know a part of that team and, and playing my role i wasn't um i'll be honest uh wasn't the most athletic or you know the most dominant in every sport that i did or, or to be honest any sport but um you know just competing and and being a part of of that common goal to to succeed was something that i really loved and that that played a role um, you know, of going, me going into the military down the line, which, you know, we'll get into it as well. But um, just being part of a, a team's common goal, you know, working together with a lot of people growing up was, was something I truly enjoyed. 
you know, I'm curious because I did, I didn't, I don't, I'm not from Columbus. And so I don't really know, you know, the sports and obviously, you know, when I came for college, you know, even to this day, I don't really know high schools and, you know, who's good at what sports and, and, you know, all of that, uh, putting you on the spot. What was one of the things that you've learned or did learn, you know, from that experience where, you know, maybe a certain team or a certain sport at your school that you were a part of, um, where expectations were a lot higher than normal? Um, I would say, you know, again, with West Jeff being such a rich uh, football tradition town, um, it's kind of, I, I relate it to a high state, not in the fact that we were anywhere near that good, but, um, you know, the same thing is, as uh, all those fans expect them to be good every single year, and that is the expectation. Um, you know, it was, um, you know, this is the way or the highway kind of a deal. You know, you are going to, if, you, if you're a part of this team, you're going to work your butt off. And um, I really think that we took that into every single uh, game moving forward. And we had a, we had a rivalry with Jonathan Alder growing up, Plain City, um, you know, where it, it was a, a town right down the road from us and uh, same county and everything. And we just, it, it was a rivalry where, it was almost like, again, a high state Michigan. It was, it was a bitter hatred, but then at the, as soon as the game was over or whatever, we were, you know, friends because it was right down the road, at least some of us anyways, we, you know, growing up, you, you uh, get a little bit more into it than, than you should. But as you grow older, you realize, you know, they're just <laughs> normal people, but um, expectations were very, very high as, as far as any sport goes, mostly football, but any sport we were expected to win. And, and um, if you didn't, then, you know, you better get back in the, in the practice field and grind. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a different level of accountability, right? Not, not even for, for the coaches, for the fans, but even for your teammates. Yeah, you, weren't, um, you were expected to hold up your end of the deal, you know. Um, you were a part of the team and, and you were supposed to play a vital role. So, you know, show up every time, do your job and, and do it to the best of your ability every day. And, um, you know, like I said, I'm lucky enough to have the same group of friends. But um, when we got on that practice field, there wasn't a whole lot of friendship, man. It was, you know, you better work your butt off or I'm going to call you out and tell you about it. So but as soon as that whistle blew, practice was over, it was right back to friendship. So, yes, yeah. no, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, and I know that's, that, you know, that's going to play a big role into your career, uh, you know, moving forward, just having some of those past experiences and we'll, we'll dive into it. So, you know, you go through high school, um, you know, what's, what's the next step after high school? Did you go to college? What'd so, um, my senior year actually right after football, um, was over, I decided, you know, I, I was trying to look into plans. What do I want to do after high school? And, you know, the common goal around everywhere is just go to college. That's what the, the plan is. So, um, I wanted to go to college, but didn't know how to how to pay for it, didn't know how to afford it. And um, I looked into, you know, the military and talked to one of my really good friends um, and, and him and I ended up enlisting in the Army National Guard uh, my senior year. So we started doing our drill weekends before I even graduated. Um, and, and I had always been interested in the military, loved all the movies growing up. I had a lot of uh, friends of the family that were in the military and family members. So um and my dad loves the military, absolutely loves it. So um, it was just, you know, something that fell into my lap and it just felt right. So um, ended up joining the, the guard my senior year. And then when everyone else went off to college right after we graduated, um, you know, they waited that summer and then they went at the end and I stayed home with them. And then at the end of the summer, went to boot camp. Um, spent three months there out in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. And uh, I call it Fort Lost in the Woods because it was in the <laughs> middle of nowhere. I was um, saying Missouri, what? <laughs> yeah, middle of nowhere, my friend. So um, we had every every weather season you could think of. It was really hot when we first got there, then it rained crazy. And then by the time we left, it was bitter cold. But um, awesome experience. And, and I really excelled there. I loved it, enjoyed it. And um, you know, started my military career. So when I got, got out, um, of basic training, then I came back and my, my enlistment contract was, um, one week in a month and then two weeks in the summer and whatever training that I had right. to do. But, um, it allowed me to also go to college as well. So, um, enrolled at Ohio university when I got back, I knew that I always wanted to go to OU. So, um, be a Bobcat down there. I've got a little bit of a, um, let's say that socializing uh, aspect of me started to, started to come out pretty good uh, for Athens campus. But 
Um, went down to OU and just didn't didn't really know what I wanted to do. I just know, you know, go to college. And I thought, you know, how can I help people? That's kind of my nature. I like to, you know, help people as much as possible. So um, I thought copper firefighter, you know, civil service and started going for um, criminal justice. Long story that didn't end up working out. Um, I didn't I didn't fit right for me. So I transferred yeah. to, to Hawkin College up the road and when I went for firefighters. So I ended up graduating from there. But of course, I had to live on OU's campus. How was I going to leave there? So so uh, what? So just real quick, what uh, made you just switch colleges? Was it just because of the program? They didn't have it or? Yep. Yep. OU, uh, they didn't have it. Hawking College, they had, they were more of a technical program where, sure. you know, they had the uh, firefighter training stuff on site. It's very, very cool. Um, a lot of the facilities that they had. So and it was only 15 minutes up the road. So I could still, you know, stay down there with my buddy and you get um, your social fixes in, huh? Get my social <laughs> fixes. And that's how we're going to refer to it. So, um, yeah, I had a, had a phenomenal time down there. And um, anyways, ended up graduating from from Hawking uh, with a firefighter paramedic degree, which uh, brings me back to home. Yeah, so, I, didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know that about you. I didn't I didn't know that you actually that's what you went for. Yeah, man, it's uh, I'm, I'm like an onion, man. You can pull back the layers. There's there's quite a few, <laughs> quite a few in there. But um, yeah, definitely getting made fun of for that on the podcast for the wife. But um, anyways, you know, had a lot of of um, I don't know, different thoughts coming out of college. Is you know, after I I wanted to what, go to what, firefighter. What what year was that? That was 2014. So that's okay. when I graduated. Okay, and. Um, when I did, I was like, oh, I want to, I got into it to fight fires. I love the adrenaline rush. I'm kind of a junkie in that way. And uh, then they were like, okay, you got to get your EMT license. Okay. So I got that. Then they said, got to get your medic license. I said, okay, I got that. So what I learned, come to realize was a lot of it was medic runs. And, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I just didn't enjoy it as much as I thought the fire, the fireside would and fight, you know, going into the burning building, um, you know, kind of like the hero theme, I guess. I like that, you know, running running into the fire. So um, didn't end up liking it. So switched careers and uh, job hopped a lot after that. And um, it was a it was a long, long road. So so how long how long were you, um, you know, doing the firefighting stuff until you realized that, you know, it just wasn't the right the right I'm, spot? I'm the type of person where, you know, if I don't like something, I, I know it right away. Um, you know, whether it's a, a person, an environment, a job, if I don't like it, I know I got an instant feeling. It's just a gut feeling. And yeah. it only took me just a couple months, man, um, a couple months. And I knew right yeah. away. When it... And normally I ask this question a little bit further down, but I mean, did you have any pushback from that when you made the decision after making the commitment? Because because I was like the same way, right? Like, <clears throat> I went to Ohio State. Um, I couldn't get into main campus my first year. I wanted to be an accountant because that's what my grandfather did. Um, and I had to go through all of the math classes from the big, you know, I think that was should have been the first sign, right? Like you shouldn't go for accounting if you have to start at the very first math class that you have to take in college and work your way up. You should have like already advanced, you know, <laughs> to skip a couple classes when you first show up on campus. But sure. you know, like, you know, I think it's important because I, uh, you know, I went to Ohio State for accounting and, you know, I, I got the calculus. I failed. I, I switched my major. Um, and as soon as I graduated, I jumped into real estate. And, you know, my parents, um, they didn't tell me to my face, but they were probably thinking, oh, boy, like uh, you just went to school for four, four years and you're not using your degree. And oh, by the way, for me. I jumped into a fully commissioned job, um, you know, right after, right after graduating, I had some buffer, I had some help, you know, I was um, getting some money as a, as a paid admin, but did you have any pushback when after you're like, okay, I went to school, got my license. I, you know, got the, the EMT and, and the med and all that other stuff. And then, Oh, by the way, I don't like this anymore. <laughs> um, very similar story, actually. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So when I, I actually got a lot of pushback from every single person ever, um, you know, and understandably so, you know, I had, uh, like you said, you, you work all this, you do all this hard work and you take all this time, pass all these tests, do what you're supposed to do and get your license. And, and you just, 
And there, I think from everyone else's eyes, they thought that I just gave up and didn't give it a chance. Sure. And um, for me, it was like, I know right now I can't do this the rest of my life. And why would I waste my time doing something that number one, anything I do, I'm a hundred percent in. Like if I'm doing it, I'm, you got everything of me. So um, I just wasn't all the way in it. And so, yeah, there was a lot of pushback. Um, you know, I love my parents and they are very, very supportive of everything I do. But um, I think that day they questioned the decision pretty hard and they were like, you know, what in the world are you doing, man? You just, you know, spend all this money, time, effort. And um, right. You know, and now you're just going to change. And what are you going to do? I think that's what a lot of people was because I didn't have a plan. I just knew that that wasn't it. Let's be honest. I, I didn't have a plan. I just had I didn't have a plan. The I didn't have a plan. The plan was not that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, a lot of pushback, and you know, they still supported me, and they knew that I would figure it out. Um, you know, parents, uh, Jesse, and now my wife. Um, you know, everybody around, even friends, even acquaintances, were like, "What are you doing?" But. Um, and, and some didn't want to say that some did, sure. um, but, but it was, and I honestly, I didn't know either. I had, yeah. I had no idea, but I knew there was something out there for me. And so, um, you know, when I did, it was like, okay, well now I got to start making money, you know? So it was job after job. And I just, I was open to try anything, anybody that would give me a chance to be successful. And, um, I tried a lot of different things, a lot of different jobs. I sold cars. Um, I worked construction, electrical work, um, a little bit of everything, delivery packages. I mean, I, I did it all. So um, that all led me to this to this real estate job. And, you know, looking back at the time, I wanted to just know what it was. I'm impatient in that way. But um, looking back, I think it gave me so much experience I don't, and networked with so many people. I don't think I would change it. I really don't. Yeah. I mean, you know, like I said, I you've probably taken something small and, and maybe you don't even think about it right this moment, but maybe in the future, it's like, man, that one thing I did, you know, back then is helping me now. Right. Well, even if something, something simple, you know, just like failing, right. Like I joke about me failing calculus, but I've never failed a class in, in my life up to that point or after, you know, and that first time I took that exam, I got a 34%. I was like, Oh man. Oh, <laughs> you yeah, know, like, oh, you know, uh, so I, I think, you know, and then, you know, you go and graduate and you're doing it and then make a decision. Nope, this isn't for me. And now you got all of the outside pressures and, and thoughts and opinions and, you know, all of that that comes with it. And I'm sure it's definitely helped you, you know, now, you know, to kind of help block out some of those things. I, um, so, yeah, I, I think they're all teaching moments. And so then we lead up to, right, like you drive hopping around, trying to figure out what you enjoy doing. Um, was there, was it just looking for something that you enjoy doing? Was it a lifestyle? Was it happiness? What were you searching for? Ooh, um, I think it was a little bit of everything, you know. Um, I wanted, I was unhappy for sure. I mean, it was borderline depression as far as, you know, some of these jobs, it was like, I've tried this, 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 and this, nothing's working. And then you start to doubt yourself, you know, um, with all these people doubting you, you don't know what you're doing. You're changing jobs, but every day waking up at you're unhappy. So it was definitely happiness, um, was what I was looking for. Um, I've always wanted to have, have enough finances to do as I please, as far as having that financial freedom. So there was definitely some, you know, money involved is whatever jobs I was looking at. I wanted to make sure I could support my family first and foremost. So that was it, but it was something that, like I said, I've got this gut feeling that just kicks in with everything I do. And I either know it's right or know it's wrong. And I knew there was every job I tried, it wasn't right. So I was looking for, for something where I got enjoyment and it didn't feel like a job. You know, the old saying, um, you know, you never work a day in your life if you love what you do. Yeah. Well, I knew, okay, well, if that's true, what do I love? And I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out, man. So it was, it was rough. Um, but yeah, I mean, so, so that leads up to real estate, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you're jumping around why real estate, like what, why this industry? What intrigued you? 
So I've always really loved everything about houses, you know, the buying, the selling, the architecture, the land. Like I said, I love, you know, outdoors. I love being in the country. So I've always liked that part. In fact, um, I thought about being a carpenter and an electrician because I wanted to be, you know, involved in that and building houses. I, I love seeing the start to the finish. Um, but then throughout you know, some of those other jobs. And like I said, the, the military and the firefighter paramedic, I loved helping people. Mm -hmm. So it was a combination of, you know, the housing, the helping people through a very stressful and difficult process and being that advocate for them um, really just fit for me as far as real estate goes. But how I got into it, I owe it all to uh, the team leader himself, Mr. Michael Doyle. Big shout out for him. So I'm scrolling through Facebook at, at one of my crazy jobs trying to figure out, you know, how can I how can I get out of this? I'm looking through Indeed.com for different jobs to apply to. It's a rough day for Joe, but um, I'm scrolling through Facebook and I see Mike just constantly popping up all the time. And every time he posts, it's, it's genuine happiness. Um, you know, I can tell that he thoroughly loves what he does. Um, I know he's making a killing and doing it. And so um I, I could tell that it, he just had that thing that i wanted which was yeah. that i found what i'm doing for the rest of my life yeah so um i just took a chance man and i i uh, messaged him and was like hey you know do you just want to sit down one day for lunch and let me pick your brain you know you seem really happy and um i had known of mike throughout uh high school he went to uh he, he spent a short stint at london even though he doesn't like to admit it um, so I knew him from there and then, um, you know, I met him a time or two down at uh, my social events at OU, but did you guys, did you, you weren't like tight or friends, you just kind of ran in some of the same circles or just kind of knew each other from a distance? Just, you know, Madison County is a very, very small County. So, um, you end up being at a lot of the same, uh, parties I'll call them in high school. And, um, you know, between that and then just, you know, different fairs, things like that. I heard of his name or he heard of mine and just at different places. So definitely not not the best of friends by any means. We just didn't know each other all that well. Yeah. So it was really it was kind of a gamble, man. As soon as I sent the message, I was like, it was like almost like texting a girl. It's like, man, I hope they respond, <laughs> you know, it's um, like sweating. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And uh, he's like, yeah, no, for sure, man, let's sit down. So we sat down at uh, Average Joe's, which I thought was hilarious. He picked there because obviously my name's Joe. But um, we sit down there and he just gave me every single thing that he had. Like he didn't hold anything back. He gave me everything. Um, and I could tell that he genuinely was enjoyed what he did, loved talking about it. He had that vibe, that energy that uh, that I really wanted. And he gave me he was an open book. I could tell that if I wanted to be a part of it, that he would be there to help me. And um, I had thought about a real estate a long time ago, but need, knew I needed a mentor. And that's why I didn't, never got into it. But because I was, you know, full commission job, right? Uh, big risk, you know. And um, Mike ended up being that guy for me, being the mentor. So thank him. I can't thank him enough because without him, I, I definitely wouldn't be here. So he's been that guy for me and and stayed true to his word. He's helped me with everything he possibly could. And um, it was funny when we left that meeting that day, he said, you know, go home, research some stuff. Don't go crazy with anything. Don't quit your job. Nothing like that. Well, as always, I never listened. I, I quit my job. I dropped a bunch of money on a credit card to pay for my classes. And I called him immediately. He was like, hey, man, I got my classes. Let's roll. And he was like, what? <laughs> He's like, dude, I told you not to. And I was like, uh, you know, because he wanted me to get my ducks in a row. But I knew that I wanted to be a part of whatever Mike was doing. And yeah. uh, luckily I did. That's awesome. And at the time, he didn't he didn't have a team, right? Like he there's no there's no financial incentive to meet with you and be the open book and 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 to reach out yeah he um it was all just out of the kindness of his heart man he just he really truly loves helping people and you know that's what i love to do as well so i wanted to be a part of that and yeah he there was no like you said incentive for him to go he just did it because he wanted to help someone yeah. And, um, you know, it's something that you mentioned in there that I know you and I have talked about in the past over the last year, or year and a half. You know, he was posting stuff on Facebook and you knew him, but you didn't you weren't you didn't know him. Right. You probably didn't really engage in a lot of his content 
or his post, mm -hmm. but you were watching, you always yep. saw it. Right. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about that too, right? The power of consistency of just putting out content because you just never know who's watching and who's seeing and it. And, it, and they may not be, you know, responding on every single one, but maybe in three years they reach out to, to you and they're like, Hey, Joey, I've been watching your career. I've been seeing what you're doing. I'm ready to buy or I'm ready to sell. Right. For sure. Yeah. Even if it, um, you know, that even if they never end up reaching out or they never like or comment or whatever, if I still right. am reaching some one person that, you know, means the world to me. And that, that means I was able to give back what Mike gave to me. So absolutely. Yeah. So you get into real estate, uh, you quit your job, put, put classes on credit card. Um, <laughs> again, you know, did you have any doubters, supporters, you know, now going into to this, right, where you are fully 100% commission based, <laughs> yep. you know, no, no, no check coming in in two weeks. Um, walk me through that. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, I think everyone, uh, again, doubted me because I, I definitely doubted myself. You know, I was I was to a point to where I was like, I, this feels right and I'm going to give it everything I have. But it was a whole lot of doubt in the back of my mind, for sure. And, um, you know, luckily I have my number one supporter that's always in my corner, my wife, Jesse. Um, she has helped me through everything, you know, not just the financial support, because you're right. You don't get a check day one, you know, you, you don't get a, a, Hey, welcome bonus. You know, it's uh you yeah. got your license, go to work. So, um, yeah, she, she didn't help just with the finances and stuff, but it was more or less the support when she's like, you know, you can do this. And, and, you know, if you're really going to try this, you better, you know, go, go all out, give it everything you have just like usual. So, um, she was there for, for some really hard times for me when I didn't know, you know, if this was the right move or, you know, because then it's, I, there's a potential I might not make money at all ever, you know, either I might not ever sell a house. So it was a big, big risk. But, um, you know, just like all those other jobs, I was willing to bet on myself. And luckily, um, you know, my wife is is able to, to bet on me as well. So she's been doing that since day one. And um, without her, I wouldn't be here. So shout out to her. Thank her. But um, yeah, it was again, it was, uh, you know, how are you going to get clients? How are you going to, you know, do this? How are you going to survive until then? There was a lot of unknown, a lot of questions. But and, and the, at the end of the day, once you get your license, you forget all the stuff you studied anyways. So uh, I really didn't know. But luckily, I had a very, very good support staff around me um, that was willing to willing to help me out. And, and they just really wanted me to succeed. You know, I I told them how excited I was about this and they could see it and, and hear it in my voice. And um, they were willing to, to give me their support full, full in parents, friends, family, sister, everybody. So, um, you know, they, they were in my corner after after I told them how much I loved it, you know. So um, yeah. it, was a, it was a rough road at first. Yeah, that that support that support system is is key. Right. Because you're right. You know, it's not it's you know, I always say real estate's simple, but it's hard. You know, there's no. You don't know what the outcomes are going to be, right? But if you focus on the things that that you need to focus on, um, you'll find the success. And and having those people in your corner to support you because it may be it, it does get lonely. It's lonely in the beginning, even when you have mentors and all that. Uh, yeah. It's lonely, you know, getting started. I remember I I think it was three or four years into my career. There was a time where. Um, I went four months without a closing and it wasn't because I didn't work. I just had like a couple deals fall through here and there and got to the point where I had $700 in my account. And it was just like, wow, better buckle up or, or you know, it's going to get, you know, it's going to get real lonely. And, and, you know, having those people in your corner that you can lean on and, and, you know, whether that's just even having a conversation, you know, or, or helping you clear your head or whatever. So that's awesome. Um, what, so, so you get licensed, um, you know, Mike's helping you out, right? Dive into the first, I mean, you've been licensed, what, a year and a half year? Uh, so actually December of 2021 just hit the two year mark. So two years in a month, man. Awesome. So two years, what was your, 
instant real estate story? Was there success right away? Was there some struggles? Kind of walk us through that. Yeah. So um, get my license, uh, start out at a uh, smaller brokerage signature real estate with Gary and Terry Jones. Um, and then uh, Trish over there, they are phenomenal people. I absolutely love them to this day. Um, they open their arms and welcome me into the family. But um, like I said, once you get that license, man, they tell you, forget everything you just studied and then now learn a whole bunch of new stuff and do things that you you've never done before. You know, I I was not a social media guy by any means. I was more or less reserved when it came to social media. Um, but when you get me out in public, of course, I, I can't shut up. But um, <laughs> when I when I was looking at my social media life or I was looking at networking and and going to talk to different people, it was it was rough for me, man. It was um, something completely new and, and scary. And, um, you know, you're trying to bet on yourself that you're the type of person people want to work with. So it's a mental game um, where you're it's a roller coaster like we you and I talk about a lot where, you know, you when you get a closing, it's great. When you don't, it's it's scary at times. But um, so at first it was rough, but I was so excited and so happy to finally have my license. I passed the first time, luckily, and, um, you know, get get started. And, and I get a couple of people working just within the first couple of months. So um, I think my first deal ended up closing in March. So I get licensed December of 19. I think my first deal was March of 2020. Um, and from then on, I've been so lucky to have the support system that I do, friends, family, um, and then what has become past clients, just supporting me, whether they're sharing the, the post, liking it, commenting, um, telling people that I got into real estate and how excited they are. So um, thank them for, for all the success. But um, the when I first get into it, I'm super excited and I don't, I don't know a ton. So Mike, Mike got a lot of phone calls early in the morning, late at night, all day. Um, I definitely talked to him more than even the wife. So um, it was, it was a little scary at first, but I, I did see some success and I, it's, I started to build momentum um, because I realized how much I, I did love it and I found my passion. So I knew it was it. Yeah. And, I, and, you know, I know, I know your career cause obviously, you know, I'm around you um, and, and you wanted to build your real estate business based off of, you know, your, your referral network, right. Friends, family, uh, people that, you know, and, you know, I think it goes back to what you said in the beginning, right. Like kind of small town community feel mm -hmm. um, kind of walk us through why, you know, why you wanted to focus that route, why it's important to you to, um, you know, really give back, you know, it's really when, when we're helping our friends and, and specifically what you want to do, like even be even a little bit more intentional on where you focus your business. Um, you know, we're really helping the community and, you know, whether it's growing through real estate sales and helping families grow and move and um, why, why did you make that decision? Is it, is it just because you love that community feel and, and you, and you want to give back so dive into that a little bit if you can. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely a, you know, a huge part of, of me and who I am growing up in that small town of West Jeff, that community, everybody knows everybody. So I definitely love that. And that's a true, uh, huge piece of my heart and, and it always will be. Um, but I, res I really love helping people that, you know, I've either known for a long time or something, somebody that they know. And it's just helping really, really good people instead of most uh, agents and there's nothing wrong with this, but um, I build my business based off of the referrals. But a lot of agents, they you know they they build off of leads, and that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I like to to build with people more local. I like the smaller town feel um, that that connection. I like to know people's story. I don't want to just you know help them buy a house and then move on to the next lead. I want to you know, build this relationship from start to finish and, and never really get to that finish line. You know, um, I, I want to help them before, during and after the sale. So um, that's that's where I like to spend my time instead of calling people, um, you know, trying to always sell them, sell, sell, sell. You know, I like the selling part. I do enjoy that, but it's more um, the helping of, of people and, and building those relationships and the, the conversations that you have, not even talking real estate, just talking, you know, so. Right. Um, that's for sure. Just helping people. Yeah. Clients for life. Right. You yep. know, this is, uh, I think 
you found your 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 uh, I was gonna say job, but you know your your happiness, right? <laughs> your uh, and, happiness. So you're gonna be here. You're gonna be here a while, and you know I know um, as your as your career grows and your business goes, we're gonna be very intentional and strategic on uh, how we go about building that for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and that really is, you know, as far as you asked what some of my successes are, um, my success is genuine happiness. I truly am happier now than I really ever have been. Um, you know, I'm lucky enough to have married an awesome girl this uh, earlier last year in April. And so that's obviously going good. Family life is good. But career wise, I finally I've been with Jesse a long time. So um, this is just finally finding my career is genuinely made me happy and given me the freedom to help people. And like I said, not just the buying of the selling of the home, but after that, you know, if the, the previous seller left a bunch of stuff in the house, I want to help you, you know, get that dumpster, get the home warranty so that you're protected because these things that people don't know about, if you're not in real estate every day, you don't know these things. So I want to be that person that's in real estate all the time, help you through, this uh this expensive transaction that can be very very stressful yeah no for sure for sure so i want to skip forward and and look forward um you know you're you're two years in just over two years in um you know what's one thing that you're looking to accomplish over the next couple months and or over the next year and this could be personal this could be business it, it could be both um yeah, I, I'm at a wonderful point in my life where I, you know, again, real estate allows you the freedom to decide how your business um, is made and how you grow it and the people you help and, and where you go. So um, I've got a lot of different goals, um, so it's hard for me to, to narrow them down, but this is going to be a really, really big year for me. I think short term goals is just to really stay as consistent um, as I have started off, you know. Um, being engaging in social media and talking to all these friends, family, clients, and talking to them um, about their life, you know, not just business, but building those relationships. So consistency over the next few months and just, um, you know, sticking to my goals of working out in the gym and, and reading. And that's something that um, has changed my life for sure is reading, opening a book, man. It, it really is put my mind in the right place of where it needed to be. So um, short term is that long term um, throughout this year, I want to be able to help 30 different families um, buy or sell some homes. So it's a uh, it's a pretty lofty goal, but I want to help as many people as I possibly can. And, and I think I'm going to be able to get it done. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you know, you said a key word consistency. Right. And that's one of the biggest things that differ, differentiate agents from, you know, hitting their goals or not is, you know, are they showing up every single day and, and focusing on um, their business and, and for you, right. Providing value, um, pr providing value to your friends, family, past clients, and people that, you know, um, no, that's, sure. that's awesome. And I know last year, um, you know, you, one of your goals or one of your, the things that you wanted to accomplish was, you know, being, become a football coach. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. You um, know, and I know we talked about that and, you know, is it, was it the right decision? Not the right decision, but, uh, you know, what to do. And, and I and, and we talked about, you know, real estate provides you the flexibility and the freedom to be able to do those things and still hit your goals. A hundred percent, man. Um, you know, like I said, I have a lot of goals this year. And um, one of those was accomplished last year was to become the football coach. Um one of my best friends, Shane Cahill, he's, he got the uh, head coaching job out at Madison Plains, um, local town um, out there on the west side of West Jeff as well. And it was, you know, nerve wracking, scary because it's like, hey, I'm still new to the business of real estate. I've got a lot on my plate. Um, you know, can I really commit enough time to to help Shane out and help this football team, um, you know, grow to where they want to be? And uh, I, I truly believe it was one of the best decisions I did. I love being around the kids and just, you know, helping them in all aspects of life, trying to teach them some of the things that I wish I would have known back then and um, be a, a support system for them. So 
uh, being around my kids in the football program is just awesome. I love uh, coaching with them. And actually, Shane's dad is is one of the coaches on there, and he was my first football coach ever in Little Pee Wee uh, football. <laughs> so it was it's a really cool again that small town feel, man. Just being around that Madison Plains has it as well, and um, it's a great community out there. I love being a part of uh, of the staff and and the great kids out there. I can't talk about them enough. So. Um, one of my goals is is to uh, become a better football coach this year as well. So I've got um, got a lot of things on my plate, but couldn't be more excited about it for sure. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. So future even further out, right? Um, you know, what, what's something that you're looking to accomplish within uh, the next five years? Um, so five years, uh, huge goal. And one of those is actually uh, part of the next 12 months is I want to uh, buy my first um, short term rental property in the, in the next 12 months. And then by that five year mark, I want to have enough short term rental income to give my wife and I the option to uh, work instead of being forced to work. Um, so I know that sounds a little crazy and that's a lofty goal. And five years, I'll be 36 years old and there's not a ton of, of 36 year old people retired in the, in the country. But, you know, I, I want more for, for myself, my wife, my family, um, our future kids that we're going to have. I want um, I want to be more than just average. You know, I want to be extraordinary. So um, I want to give us that option to you know, work if we want to. I know she she's a physical therapist and absolutely, um, you know, rocks her job and she loves it. But um, I want to give her that that option. If she doesn't want to work, I don't you know, want her to have to just to survive, to pay bills. You know, um, I want to be able to travel with her, my friends, family, clients. Um, I want to be able to travel with a bunch of people. I love to travel. So um, short term rental com- uh, income is definitely on the horizon for for the Adkins family. No, that's awesome. Um I'm on the same same path as you with that, you know, something that's on my to do list end of this year or or really into 2023 for myself. So what's um so for you to in order for you to hit that goal, right? You know, you short term rentals. But I think the biggest goal is, you know, the the choice of whether or not you want to work. And I'm going to assume that, um, you know, that you're still going to want to work right and, and yeah. help your clients and, and help your clients and service them with you know buying and selling real estate and i'd be the same way like i tell people like my plan is to retire by 40 right i got seven years um but i already know full well that i can't just sit around and do nothing so that's yeah. just not how i that's just not how i operate but what's one of the things that you think you need to do or add to your business um in order to hit that goal yeah. Um, and, and like you said, I think I probably will still work because I, I finally did find this. I think that, um, you know, I think I'll always be involved in real estate uh, to some extent just because I enjoy it so much, um, you know, and helping people. And I always want to be there for them. But I want that flexibility to be able to travel. And that's what yeah. real estate gives you. So um I think what I need to, to add is just uh, consistency, man. That's the biggest thing of 2022 for me is, um, you know, I've done a lot of, of great things to be proud of the last few years for sure. I, um, I was hard on myself a lot over the years, but um, the last two years I've, I've done a lot of good things, but now I want more, you know, so I've got a little taste of, of success and, and now I want, I want all of it. So just being consistent and, and intentional and in all of the things that I do. And um, I really think that'll allow me to hit my goals for sure. No, that's awesome. And I think, you know, adding in, if you, if you continue with that mindset of reading, you know, that's been one of the biggest things for me, you know, over my career, I used to hate reading. Um, and then I, I, I found that I love learning really. Um, mm-hmm. And just helping you think bigger, right. Thinking differently. Um, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the last question that I always wrap up with, um, if you could give our audience who is either thinking about getting into real estate or someone that may be similar to your, you know, life path, career path, whatever the case may be, uh, one piece of advice that you wish you had starting out, what would that be? Hmm. I, w- I would say, you know, if you want something different, you, you have to you have to change yourself, you know, and that's one of the hardest things I had to learn. Um, you know, I 
a lot of people, including myself, thought, you know, I want all of these things. Why can't I have these things? Why can't I be rich? Why can't I have this big house, fancy car, or whatever? For me, it's a boat. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's you got to be get comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, you know, so if you want a different life, you have to change the things that you do on a daily basis and, and be open to new things. So um, I know it's more than one thing, but encompassing into that one thing, which I'm a talker, so it's tough for me to narrow down the one. But I think it's, it's you know, being uncomfortable, or I'm sorry, getting comfortable being uncomfortable um, with that change. And um, if I would have done that or gotten comfortable with that a, a lot sooner, I think I would have hit success a little bit quicker. But um, I'm glad I finally am I'm trying these new things and open to different, um, different changes. What, what? I know I said that was going to be the last question, but now I got to follow up. <laughs> now I got now I got to follow up. What has made you make that change? Because it's hard, right? Like Absolutely. we all, you know, I forget who it was. I don't know if it's Tony Robbins or whatever, but you know, it's basically you know we we keep ourselves within a comfort zone or a thermometer, right? Like we don't go any if we swing one way you know, on the thermometer lower than 68 degrees, we're automatically going to do whatever it takes to get back into our comfort zone. Or if we push ourselves on the higher end, we go above 72 degrees, you know, we're immediately going to pause ourselves because that's, that's out of our comfort zone. So then we're, we're going to not do that activity or stop that activity. And we're going to come back, you know, to what we're comfortable with. What, what has been an influence or that has helped you change that mindset? Oh, man. Um, I think it's a combination of a couple of different things. Um, I think number one is is books for sure. Um, I attribute it 100 um, percent, you know, as far as changing that mindset, because it was before I found real estate that I started to read. It was a couple of years ago while I was a loan officer. Um, I knew something had to change. And so I picked up a book, uh, Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. That was the first book I picked up. And um, it changed my morning. So definitely books. It gets that mindset. I like to, to read in the morning, start your day off right. So that was one. Um, number two is all of the people around me um, the, and the mindset, the power of proximity. Um, so Mike, yourself, uh, John, huge shout out to you as a coach, man. You have tremendously helped my business and I can't thank you enough for, for all the stuff you've done for me. But having people like you and Mike around that, that are really have the right mindset and they're not negative, they're positive. They want good things for you. Um, and then the third thing that combines those two is um, Clubhouse every morning, this app on, uh, on your phone. Uh, you are the godfather of, John, the Central Ohio Real Estate Club. Um, it is a tremendous space where, you know, all of us come together every morning and it's literally just a bunch of people that have the mindset that Mike got me into this for, which is to help people as much as possible. So really, you know, the people around me, the support system, the networking, that's, that's really changed my thought process. Yeah, I mean, people, <clears throat> people and environment are so huge and you know that's why i always tell you know real estate agents or anyone in, in general you need to invest in yourself and you need to get yourself um, in and around people that are doing things bigger than you or thinking differently than you uh in a positive way right like let's not get around people that are thinking differently in a bad way right but, um you know thinking differently and, and making making you want to push yourself further uh, and that's something, you know, that I continuously do to do, you know, like I play um, sand volleyball and, and one of the uh, women on our team that we play with, she's like, oh, you're going back down to Nashville again for another conference. And I'm like, yep, you know, because I want to learn this one thing that this conference is about. Mm -hmm. Right. And I need to be around. And and sometimes it's not just the conference. It's having I, I tell anyone this. it's having those side conversations. It's meeting someone new you know, from a different market or from a different industry that's doing things a little bit differently or doing it at a higher level. Um, you know, so uh, people and environment are, are so important. And I would say like, if you're a real estate agent and you're struggling and, and you don't have that, like that should be the number one thing that you seek out immediately is finding people, whether it's at your office or a different brokerage 
or different people, finding people that are willing to give back to you and that will push you to be different and to think different. A hundred percent. You know, there's um, I think the saying is you're the average of the five people that you hang around the most. And, you know, if you hang around, you know, five people that are all negative, it's inevitable that you're going to be a negative person and have a negative mindset. So um, I'm not saying that you've got to cut out, you know, your best friends, family and, and never talk to them again or anything. But the people you hang around most need to be people that want you to succeed as bad as you want. And like I said, or like you said, you know, they've got different ideas and experiences. And I, I truly believe the day you stop learning, you should just retire or change and go do something else because you never know everything, no matter how many years you've been in whatever business you're in, there's always something out there that somebody can teach you that you don't know. Yeah, no, no, that's perfectly said. Joey, I, uh, I appreciate your time. I appreciate uh, our friendship. I appreciate you coming on and, and uh, sharing your story. Um, if someone resonated with the story or if someone, you know, hears or, or sees the podcast that that wants to connect with you or if they want to buy or sell, you know, real estate here in the Columbus market, what is the best way for them to get in touch with you and, and to connect? Uh, for sure. You know, you can either uh, go on Facebook and follow me there, Joey Adkins, um, nothing special there. Or you can give me a call on my cell, 614-905-2743. I'm always happy to help. Um, you know, even if you're not quite ready to buy, sell, maybe if you want to talk about something that's not even real estate related, I'm here for you for sure. Joey, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you and I look forward to uh, seeing your real estate career uh, take off. Absolutely, John. Thanks for having me today. I really was uh, excited and, and loved being a part of it today. Awesome. I'll talk to you later. Thank you so much. Thanks, man.